Oh, so I'm trying to extract DNA from the poop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm George Lohai. I'm a graduate student here at Penn State Biology Department. I'm from Tanzania, so I've been here. This is my fifth year. I did my undergraduate in, in Tanzania, Wildlife Science and Conservation at University of Dar es Salaam. And then I worked for Serengeti Lion Project, which was under University of Minnesota for two years. And then I went and did Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy in Uganda. And that's just before I got opportunity to do my grad school here. When I came to Penn State, I just knew I wanted to do research on elephants, but I didn't exactly know like which area. So my professor is an expert on genetics, and my background was only on ecology. So I tried to like look at an area which is not covered, like in terms of research questions in Tanzania, and I identified like uh, we really don't know much about genetic structure of elephants in northern part of Tanzania. So I just identified that through research um, review, uh, literature review. Um, so I actually identified that you can you can do a lot of stuff just using elephant poop, and that was not done a lot. So I was like, why not? We collect fecal samples, and these are like, we just collect the external part of the boli, of, of elephant dung boli, which have epithelial cells. And these epithelial cells have like um, DNA in it, okay? So what we do, we extract DNA from each of these samples. We then amplify some regions which are hi highly variable. We, we use what we call microsatellite markers. And so if individuals from different populations are isolated for a long time, you have new alleles arising from one population which are rare on the other side. So we are using 11 microsatellite markers to amplify different regions of, of, of DNA. And then we actually get the um, allele frequency for each population. Uh, we have identified um, two main subpopulations. So these are genetically distinct populations. Um, one is in the eastern part of the ecosystem the other one is like in the western part of the ecosystem. And we have actually identified a major physical barrier, which is a rift valley. So a rift valley runs between the two ecosystems seems to be one of the barrier because the population on the eastern part of, of the rift valley seems to be genetically distinct. For a population to be healthy, you need to have like genetic diversity. So understanding that itself is really valuable for conservation. But also understanding the whole question of where are these elephants from, you know? Just knowing when they colonized Serengeti before it was a national park or when the areas were open by then, like, where are they from, you know? Poaching of elephants is number one threat to elephant population. We know that elephants have been killed over years because of the ivory, but n number two threat is actually habitat loss. And that's where uh, my project kind of applies. I'm looking at what are the consequences of habitat fragmentation on a population. We want to also like make sure like most of the populations are still connected to have the whole like population of populations. We have population of Serengeti, we have population of Tarangire. Uh, we want them to be connected in, in ecology, we say it's a meta population. My plans after I graduate here at Penn State, um, I want to lead a project on conservation of elephants in, in Tanzania. I have already applied to Tanzania Wildlife Research Institute. The first one is to um, continue with um, genetic analysis, which I've already uh, done uh, on my, uh, for my PhD. Uh, there's an island in Lake Victoria. It's called Rubondo Island. Elephants were introduced in, in 70s. But there's no immigration. There's no poaching because it's an island. You know, they control it more. So we want to know like what happens to this kind of population. Then I want to also do long-term demography study of elephants in Serengeti ecosystem. So we want to follow uh, individuals within different family groups and know them by their names. You know, we can identify elephants using their natural marks and their unique individuals, different ones. And that kind of gives us an understanding of like population dynamics within the population. Uh, the third, addressing human elephant conflicts. I'm actually very grateful for Penn State University. The opportunities here are just like uh, remarkable. Penn State University has um, a lot of equipment and facilities for genetic analysis. There are some, some things which I just 
knew them theoretically, but to actually come and do sequencing and do all these kind of, of stuff which were like considered so hard, for me was like, wow, 